My name is Stella. I'm here to glorify the name of the Lord. Last evening when I, I left this place and I reached my house at around 9, 8, 9 p.m., I had the dog barking and when I got out of the house, I found a creature seated on my wall fence that had a face of a human, a face of a bat, a face that I have never seen in my life. And I called the boy who stays in my home to bring something so we could try and shoot. But as we got the anointing oil to anoint the, the, the piece of wood which we wanted to shoot, the Spirit of God told me begin to pray. And I began to pray in Holy Ghost. I began to pray in tongues. This is not a movie, it's not a Nigerian movie. Before my own eyes, the creature disappeared. I am here to glorify the name of the Lord because the fire that I had got from the revival sustained me. I thank God. Praise God, church. Amen. My name is Joy. My testimony on Wednesday was my first time to attend the revival meeting. I remember in the morning I woke up and prayed, God, may your presence lead me and take me. After the revival meeting, I got a taxi from here. As I was in the taxi, a neighbor told me, I'm going to grab your phone. Then I closed the window and extended. I received a call from my brother asking me where I was to give me a lift, but I was already near in the park. The thief tried snatching my phone. I don't know how I got the energy for pulling the phone. I tried, I, I pulled the phone and it fell on my neighbor who had told me, I'm going to snatch your phone. I have just bought the phone in January. I give God the glory that I retained my phone. Though I was hurt, but at least I was... I was able to get my phone. Then as I was almost reaching home, after putting, after putting a taxi, reaching home, I'm seeing the gate, another guy comes and boxes me. I don't know, but I thank God that I was, I, was, I was safe. Then on Friday, my friend tells me, Jane, Joy, I got a night today and I really badly wanted to see you. God showed me in the dream that your dad is dead. I don't know, I wasn't scared. I would have just started crying, but I was bold. When I reached home, I told my mom about the revelation, but I just kept praying and praying that he's not going to die. So I'm asking the church to pray for me so that my dad doesn't die. Thank you. Hallelujah. You shall not die. <laughs> Praise God, church. I want to thank God so much for the revival that I've gotten out of these meetings. I also want to thank God so much that last night my stubborn pursuer was crushed. Yeah. In a dream, like two days into the meetings, a friend who also comes to this church had a dream when one person that has pursued me like for three years had died and had been buried. I was like, God, if that is my enemy and it's true, I want my own confirmation. So last night in the dream, I had a I saw a creature like was in a serpent, like animal, which I fought and really bruised, like I removed all the skin. But after that, the creature was still pursuing me. I still got a, 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 a metal and I cut it in two pieces. But the head part still pursued me. And lastly, Somehow, I got a weapon and I crushed its head to complete ash. So I found out. My name is Juliet. I want to thank the Lord for his hand of protection and grace that has been upon my life. On the second day of the revival week, I had a dream before 3 a.m. I had a dream that I was carrying a baby and all my hands were behind holding the baby. I do not tie the, the baby, but someone told me to drop the baby, and I said, you know, if I drop my baby, it will die. So I held on to the baby, and I woke up. When I woke up, I asked myself, what kind of dream is this one? I slept again. The dream came back. I experienced the same dream, but this time someone shouted at me and said, drop that baby. And somehow the force moved my hands off the baby, and the baby dropped down. And I was scared that the baby had died, but my baby is 19 years old now. He couldn't have been the baby in the dream. So I said, now my baby is going to die. My baby has died. And I had the baby drop, too. 
but the sound was like that of a metal. I looked behind, I thought the head of the baby had crashed, it had not crashed, and I felt hurt that the baby had died. But then something sharp was moved from my back, and I gave God the glory. Praise the Lord, Church. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for this season of revival. He provided provided school fees for my son yesterday. Praise God. I thank God for the revival because uh, the day we, last last week I was I was praying for my foundations for God to release me from my foundations. And the Spirit of God kept commanding me to pray for seven days. And it, I was supposed to start on first March. And then my mom came home and told me we were going to have revival for seven days. So it was in line with what I was praying for. And God has released me from my foundation. Praise God. Yeah. My name is Brenda. Uh, on the 1st of February, actually on the 2nd of February, my contract at my place of work was unfairly terminated. But I stood in prayer, I came and shared with Pastor Betty, she stood in prayer with me as well as my friend who introduced me to this church. We continued praying and I asked God to give me the grace to make an appeal to the permanent secretary. I was told that when he makes decisions, he doesn't turn back on them. But Pastor Betty told me to pray at midnight and something would happen. I want to give God the glory that in this week of revival, on the 5th of March, I got my contract back. Praise God, Church. My name is Moses Ejia. It was my first time to step in this church yesterday. Um, for the last one year, I've not been working from the time my contract ended. But um, to cut the long story short, last night I had a dream, and in that dream, um, I was going to where I'd worked before to pick my appointment later. But in that dream, at the gate, the scary spoke to me and asked for my valid ID, for which I didn't have, but I kept on insisting and let, to let me in. I also remember after I had crossed the gate, I entered him to walk upstairs. My name was not they looked around and my name was there. And uh, the only name that appeared in that dream was, your job has been given to Harriet, that was it. But uh, I woke up in the morning, I prayed. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and prayed. Today morning, when I prayed, I went to the library to do some research, but then I got a phone call coming from my HR. And as I talk now, I've received my, my contract. I remember the day Papa told us to pray against stubborn pursuers. That night I prayed and I continued. And a lion jumped. You know, the lion just came wanting to swallow me. But I told the lion, you lion, you not swallow me. So the lion stopped. And now focused to swallow my hands. I said, you equally not swallow my hands. So get out of me. And the lion left me. You know, it was so amazing that I could command that lion. So I, the last two days, the Lord gave me a wailing spirit. So I continued, even at night, I was praying on my foundation. Then two days, I got like drawing a family tree. And in the family tree, I did not understand properly. I continued with that prayer last night or while I was still praying on my foundation. So last night, I got a man in the dream direct me now. You have to move to the Exodus direction. And I, it's like I was answering exam, but this time round it was like the tree of Exodus. And they told me, move and don't look on the side, just move. So I thank God that I know that something happened. Amen. Praise God, Church. I'm called Lillian Apol. I would like to thank God for what she has done during this revival time. I remember day two, I had a dream. In that dream, I was singing this particular song, Pastor kept singing that, Oh Lord, make me a practical instrument for you and use me, oh Lord. So in that process, they discovered I was sleeping on the chairs. 
So I went back to my bed and I got an attack again in the dream. Two men came. One looked like Prophet Takhandi, but looked younger. And then the other one looked like a priest, tied a rope. So they came and I asked them, What do you know about Pastor Takhandi? Yes. In the long run, when one of them moved out, the other one turned into Yoka Khan only to, 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 to attack me. Then I said, I will never worship foreign God. Then I prayed and touched that guy, the Kakande guy, and then he turned into a handbag. And I moved out. When I moved out, when I moved out, I found this crowd waiting for him. I prayed for them and opened their eyes and realized their mistakes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, church. My name is Harriet. I want to thank God for this week. Like, I've been praying, but like midnight hour, I have been praying like for just an hour or 30 minutes. But I thank God that ever since the revival week started, I can pray up to four in the morning and still make it to go to work. I also thank God that even when I'm speaking these days, I speak the gospel. Actually, someone was telling me today, hey, you're taking this thing serious. <laughs> I told them that it's the grace of God. So I thank God. And I also thank God for revealing to me a lot of things. The Lord really so much. I give God the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord Church. At the beginning of the revival week, I had a lot of financial challenges and I cried out to God. Um, brethren, on Friday, someone unexpectedly blessed me with $1,000 and this was enough to sort all my issues. I give God the glory. Amen. I'm Zion Roda. I thank God for providing for me. I wanted to shift because I told God I need new two workshops this year. But um, in this week, when we started, I got a new a good place. It was far much bigger than where I was, and it was too expensive. It is times three where I'm renting right now. I asked God I really need to go to that place. And I thank God that I, I never had any money. But on that day, I told my sister, I don't have even a coin. He said, but believe in the Lord, you are going to pray. In that, on that very day, I, I got two months. Someone sent me money two months that month to go and pay two months. Then when you asked the landlord, you wanted six months. The landlord said, come back tomorrow, I'll talk to you later. But when he went to sleep, I said, God, when I came here, that, that, friend, that, that workshop belongs to me and me alone. So when I went there in the morning, in the morning, the landlord said, God told me to give you that workshop. I thank God that I got it. Praise God. My name is Alvan Romo. I joined this church on the 28th of November last year. I should have joined in 2013. <laughs> to succeed doing that is a miracle to me. For if I had not succeeded to become a member of this church, I would be dead. That's one miracle. The second miracle has happened today. Uh, I didn't know why I make money, but money never stays in my money never stays in my bank account. Actually, in 2014, days, I had 37 million something, but something like three months ago, the bank had, the bank account had reached the point of being closed. It's a miracle to me, and the sign today that he, that is no more is the rain that you saw this afternoon. Praise God. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. I have been up country for some weeks, but when I managed to return to Kampala, I tell myself, I first March, I must touch my 40 day first. I start and so let me go to the word assembly and do the evening prayer for the beginning of the month. I land here and it's revival. I just told God, you are certainly the one who told Pastor Ben to conduct this revival. So much has happened, but last night we prayed a lot about limitation. I have been doing SCC and for some time I wasn't doing exams because I didn't have money. And I almost omitted including SCC among the things I feel are being limited. But when the Spirit reminded me, I said, Lord, even this SCC which has been limited, I arise, I, you know me, it's resurrected. I get home, I wasn't expecting that in any way my husband would have money. So I just mentioned, well, I'm not going to do June exams because I don't have money. He said, how many papers do you want to do? 
I told him, when two would be enough, he's like, how much do you need? And you know, we pay school fees in dollars and exams in pounds. I didn't expect us to have the money. He just said, just go to match, get in, and make sure you're set with the junior exams. I give the glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Church. I thank you so much for this revival week. I've been away, I've been very strong since uh, 15th December last year. But uh, before the revival, walk, uh, revival week, I had three consecutive days, uh, the dream whereby I was seeing the fire before me, but it was not scaring. I told my home, fel uh, home, home fellowship members about the dream, and they said, no, we have to inquire about it. But uh, when we came here, uh, the pastor announced the revival week. I said, I said, God, you are great. This is what I've been going through. Because one of my daughters dreamed when they had stolen uh, my Bible. And my prayer life has gone very, very low. But I thank God. Because for the past two days, I've been able to pray from midnight up to around 5 a.m. Give the glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the church. I thank God very much uh, for the past five months. I've had bad dreams of retrogression, stagnation, and they bothered me a lot because I would wake up depressed about them. But the uh, past three days, I've not had such dreams. I was just waiting for an extra night. You might just know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm called Annette. I want to thank God so much. Um, in the month of praise, I was living in limitation, but I did not bow down. I continued praising God. And God showed me that it's not about salary, because I didn't get salary in January as well as uh, February, but I, 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 live, I think I lived a better life at four getting salary because people kept on blessing me and everything was settled. And I also want to thank God so much for Revival Week because when Pastor announced that week for Revival, I also prepared my own Revival because I had been lost, you know. I didn't need anyone to tell me, but everything was just not working. And I also want to thank God so much. I work very near living what I pray to God to bring me close to my church and when I'm near here, now that I'm near here, I couldn't come to church. But I thank God so much that it's chose for me time now since Tuesday. I'm going to time for lunch hour and do everything for God. I give God the glory. Praise the Lord. My name is Edith. I thank God. On Thursday, I, I passed by the doctor before I came, before I came to church. And he examined me. I just had a bit of headaches that was on for some time. I thought it was just a pregnancy thing. And he told me, you're very sick. I am going to, I told him I have to go to church. And he said, anyway, what, whatever you want to do, if you want to go to church, you go, but you, you will, I don't know. And I said, but okay. So he put me on drip. I called my fellowship leader. And before I knew it, I, was, I started contracting. And I told him that I, I, this thing, usually, it happened in the first two pregnancies. This time, not. So when the, the contraction started coming, I said, I am leaving. And somehow, it came down. And the second testimony is, I managed to get a visa without documents to the UK and the free ticket. <laughs> Praise the Lord Church. My name is Consolata. There are two contracts that I've been trying to get. These two contracts would have caused like half the company to be streamlined. But I thank God that I have been able to get one contract signed and uh, I'm believing in God that I'll get the other contract signed by Friday. Uh, praise be to God, brethren. I came here last Saturday and I testified about my being born again, that it has been the most precious thing that has happened in my life. Amen. I've really had a troubled life behind, 
But that day, I told you I had got two encounters with God, and I've been falling down, and I was telling people that it was, it was, I used to tell people it is drama, it was magic. But even on that day, I got another encounter, and this time it was a serious one. When Pastor Ben was approaching, I saw a very, very, very bright light, and it just struck me, and I fell down. And yesterday, after prayers, I went, I met Mama. I told Mama, I have problems, I've been going through this. I have had so much contracts, I've been doing this. I've been working a lot of money and things we are not moving. And my money would just go. I'm telling you to the tunes of millions and millions until I went down. But today, as Mama told me to get prayer lines, and when we went and prayed with my aunties and my, my fellow members at home, today as I, as I were praying, um, my, one of my aunties sprinkled um, uh, the, the oil, and something came out from my stomach, through my mouth, and I threw it out. And when my auntie told me, I saw something they had put in your food, and it had just come out today. I thank the Lord for that. Praise God. My name is Grace, and I want to thank God. I want to thank God that I recommended my life to Him. I've been having very many issues in my life that I didn't understand, but God has been revealing Himself to me, and I thank Him that at least at, at some time, sometimes I feel like probably maybe I, I was. Not so sure whether being saved was the right choice for me, but I thank God that He has been reassuring me <laughs> that I made the best choice that I can ever make, and I thank God that He's He's delivering me every day. He teaches me something new, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage everyone that you have to stand strong in God in everything you do. You just have to trust God. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm called Alice. On Saturday after solution hour, I went to see my uncle. He told me, you know what, you, you people have not treated me well, but I'm going to call you for a meeting on Wednesday. And on Tuesday, tomorrow is Tuesday. And I want to forgive all of you publicly. So I thank God for that because I've been praying so hard. Our uncle has been struggling to forgive us. But I thank God that tomorrow is going to um, forgive us. As well. <laughs> Praise God, church. I'm called Lord, and I'm here to glorify the name of the Lord in my workplace. My boss, uh, somehow when you take something to sign, you sign it for like four hours. So on Saturday before coming for revival, he just signed it within five mi minutes. It's a booklet, and he'll make you, you, you can start to midnight just to sign that booklet. This time round is to win five minutes and I give all the glory. Then another testimony I'm giving is um, there's a business I've opened up somewhere, but the, the structure wasn't moving, it has been stagnant. But this week of revival, today I got all the materials required to complete the structure. I give all the glory. <laughs> and finally, I thank God for, for reviving me as an individual. I, my prayer life was, my spiritual life was so low. I would pray, praise, and worship and just lose it. I couldn't sit to pray. I give God the glory that I'm now revived individually and I'm praying and uh, I glorify the Lord. Praise God, church. I thank God for my life. I thank God that He gave me a job and not only a job, but at the place of my work, they, gave, they handed over the keys to me that I'm now in charge of my salary of the saloon, and now I'm, I'm now the one who opens and closes, and thank God for that. Praise God, church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Brethren, I've come here to you yet the devil. <laughs> Only last week, last week, I came and uh, Testified here that uh, my wife had been healed of sick of uh, deafness, but the devil was not done. 
<laughs> on the second day of the revival here, when I went back, the lady was in terrible pain. She couldn't walk, she couldn't stand, she could, was just crying. I took her to Mulago Hospital. She was attended to by about 40 doctors from Japan, from Asia, from Europe. From, <laughs> uh, and all tests were carried out. And I tell the brethren, all the tests we came out negative. We decided to abandon the hospital on Friday, and we just went home to surrender every matter to God. Uh, and we informed our leader, Sandra, the our situation, and we were linked to this program. Well, she has not, her condition was worse than when I took her to the hospital. Was, was worse as we left the hospital. But as I talk now, I left her this morning, this afternoon as I was coming here, the lady had recovered. She had prepared with me. Restructure and whatever is going on, I am only seeing the hand of God 
because I was, for the past two, three years, I was earning very good money, but I was living in a life of debt, debt, day in, day out. But after this restructure, because you get some money, I see my life being settled and happier than even when I'm in the organization. And I thank God, a lot is still happening, and I still wait for God to see the very results that I wait for. Hallelujah. Praise God, church. My name is Margaret. A few weeks ago, my husband went for a business trip, and um, when I called him, he was very indifferent. Then in one of the nights of this week of revival, our pastor was leading us to pray against runaway wives and runaway husbands. So I was like, eh, we hope this is not a runaway husband. <laughs> so um, what I did, I decided to pray with all, with all the might I had and all the strength. So today morning at 6 a.m., my husband comes in. I was like, oh, that's God. <laughs> leaders, we have a group and they call us pastors. So every I'm like, hey, the pastors? Okay. Then uh, this week, my phone has been full with messages. Dear pastor, I have a problem. Dear pastor, I have a problem. <laughs> I've just been forwarding them to our uh, pastor. I'm like, pastor, I don't think I can handle But I thank God that someone recognizes I can help. Yeah, Praise God, church. I'm real. Um, and thank God for his endurance, and to thank God for my senior six results, and to thank God I got a job in a national organization, and I have seen his favor in the organization I work in. Praise God. My name is Peace. At the beginning of this program, I mean, before this program began, when Pastor was announcing it, there were things I thought I had Pastor set up here, like, I remember hearing, like he said, that there are seven people whose lives are never going to remain the same, and we are going to have seven days of prayer and fasting. I actually thought he announced them uh, audibly there, but later I realized that it was the Holy Spirit who had spoken those things. And so, but I just keyed into them, and I just knew that if I have heard them, whether heard them from Pastor Ben or from the Holy Spirit, I have to key into them. So on day four, after leaving, after praying here, I left this place when I was very assured in my spirit that my life had actually changed. When I went, when I slept, I had a dream where I was given a panga, but I believe that it was a just And uh, by the time I woke up from that dream, I was just practicing with this word because in, in that dream, I was, yes, in a dream, uh, targeting like a serpent which is far, and I was shooting, and it was just accurate. So I believe that that is my change, and I also believe that whatever didn't happen on Friday happened on Saturday during Solution Hour. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, Church. Um, the day before elections, when I was going home, they grabbed my laptop. And what I didn't tell everyone I told that they brought my laptop was my documents, all my original certificates were in that bag. And I didn't know that I had left an envelope that had my contacts. So I, I just, I prayed a prayer when I got home, but yesterday my documents were re recovered. Someone called me and my documents were recovered. <laughs> when just before the midnight hour, Pastor said, if you haven't forgiven or you're struggling with bitterness, pray about it. I prayed and forgave and I thought I'd forgiven. But every time I went to pray, something told me to stop praying. And I wondered what it was, because I tell you, I haven't prayed enough. I actually did not have enough time to pray. So last month overnight, I was standing behind her and I had a force tell me, this is it. This is it. And I did not understand what it was because it was an altar call for if, are you really, really born again? Little did I know that that was my hour and beginning of revival. Bitterness was done with forever. It had become a bondage, and now I'm free. And because of that, there are many new things that have started happening. Yesterday in the morning, for the first time in our 10 years of marriage, 
my husband gave me his tithe and told me to take it to that church of mine where I call my dad. <laughs> It is for pastor. I've specified what it is for, and I believe that is the beginning for the marriage of this. Praise God, church. I also want to thank God. Before this revival, I was going through very many actually problems, and even that the arrest my name from the payroll. I wouldn't get money for very many months. But during this revival, I thank God that He caught on to my what the human right, whatever. The resource, yes, each other. Actually, when I talked to her, she just came by herself and talked to me. And I told her what I was, and I told her that now I'm not going to work, I rather serve God and abandon the job. Then she told me, no, what I'm going to do, we shall work over that. We shall do something. At the end of it all, I told her where I prayed from. She wanted to come. Actually, she came and even got saved. And she told me all the people who are against me, the people who didn't want me to get the salary. <laughs> and I thank God that she has been fighting my battles all along. A lot, a lot. I needed this time to, to, to give. Amen. We don't have nothing. Praise God, everybody. Sandra. Saturday, when we went back, I was very strong. So I reached home. My mama wasn't there. And I thought I had locked the door. I really thought. And I just put a padlock only to realize. Sunday morning by 4 a.m. as I was waking up trying to get prepared so that I could come. The door was open. First I froze. My mom didn't come back home. She had called at around 2. And I thought, okay, I really closed the door. I didn't burden. God is faithful. Nothing was wrong. Nothing was stolen. I want to thank him. 